they're looking great you know mm -hmm. yeah all across the board in that last game not too many uh they did start to use you know once they got their sizable lead start to play a little bit loose i guess you could say that would be the term for them i like that I but uh so they they could tighten that up you know towards the mid game but all in all gonna continue their targeting froggen in the ban phase which has worked out pretty well I don't think they'll have to be the ones to finally ban the rise that may come from Echo Fox this time. So we'll see what switch up could be on the Immortal side ban. Azir will be coming from Echo Fox. And again, it's probably going to be focused at what KFO or Froggen would be flexing. That seems to be what all three bans are at. CLG did the same thing. We'll see if Immortals continues to keep on Froggen. Yeah, Pobelter uh, continuing to draw those Azir bans. Mm -hmm. Adrian, the original Soraka LCS <laughs> player. Not too much changing up here. Oh, okay. So they banned the the Karma out, even though Adrian was the one to use him in the last game. Don't want to let Echo Fox go with a more poke-oriented bottom lane. I was saying, was that Echo Fox would almost have run Immortals comp last game. I was like, Echo Fox, try the Sivir comp. Why not? A lot of mobility. The team moves well if you can kind of separate single fights. Yeah. Froggen's very good in those kind of quick solos, but Immortals took it. We'll see what they can come up with this time. Nidalee, your last ban. Maybe with this much focus on the support bans here and both Karma and Soraka, Nami might, uh, we might see some Nami here. Is yeah. the healing support left in the game? I guess Sona. Uh, also available, but very less likely, I feel like. Uh, aside from Aphromoo showing it at MSI, uh, that was about it for her. So it's not the Aurelia. Like, it might be one of Hooney's like, last eight games were Aurelia, so he finally switches off of it. They take the, the Rise first, which actually we thought would be banned by Echo Fox going through this. Yeah, um, definitely. And it is a very intimidating first pick, the mm -hmm. Rise. It's a flexible pick. It's also something that can really take out a lot of other top laners if you flex it top uh like trundle and these other melee top laners you can do very well against versus aurelia though it's one of those classic ranged versus melee matchups where if left alone the rise can start to you know use that advantage use the brush up there to bully however if junglers come if there is intervention and the aurelia closes aurelia does have kill pressure you know if you yeah. get you know, before you get too far behind, if you get some early visits and close that gap, if Ryze, you know, gets behind, then he's really squishy and Aurelia can continue to close on him and go for the kill. Yeah. But it definitely does take some help. It looks like stage. they just also put a way to shut down those dives in with that Zyra pickup. Love seeing the Zyra play. Hate playing against it. Yeah, the Zyra to shut down all initiations, plus the Ezreal, one of those AD carries, mm -hmm. Uh, they can try and fend for himself, be a little bit more successful than something like Ash uh, in uh, <laughs> warding off the Aurelia. Where will Echo Fox direct their strategy? I haven't seen really any Talia play here in North America. A few over in the LPL. Maybe a little love today? Who knows? Yeah. Frog, Frog gets banned out so deep into his champion pool sometimes. It may just be that. They're going to hover it though. Caitlyn and Alistar are the pickups as they give themselves some for sure initiation on that Echo Fox team. Yep, yeah, pretty clear there. Uh, and with the Rek'Sai taken away, that's an insta lock Olaf for Rainover. Mm. One of his favorite jungle champions. And he will be dive buddies with the Rumble. All right, we get to see some <laughs> Rumble. Very fun. That top lane matchup. Yeah, you can control the minion wave really easily, especially early on with Rumble. The early levels are going to be very important here if we get standard lanes, which I hope that we do. Um, and it's a very similar case as well. Uh, can definitely attract junglers because Rumble's going to get Aurelia low due to the AoE of Flame Spitter, but that opens up Aurelia to set up ganks with an Equilibrium Strike mm -hmm. and the long stun. The minion wave is just right. You're kind of all around Rumble and then dodging that flame as he's thunder. Yeah, Rumble is one of those original top lane champions that's fearful for junglers to go <laughs> gank because he can so often turn around yeah. one versus two situations if he's got his ultimate equalizer and flame spitter burning down a duo. What consideration goes into this last pick? Looks like the victor may just switch hands. And it will be locked in. So Echo Fox is going to be going with the victor. We're going to see that mid lane up against the Rise. 
Not too shabby. Good compositions on both sides. The more of a stop initiation, but if we hit a an equalizer, we'll go in from Immortals Cup. Yeah, Immortals Cup. Cool. Well, it, they do have some powerful picks. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have a lot of reliability here. Uh, it does take, you know, the equalizer doesn't have much to set it up unless Adrian right. on Zyra is going to be able to land, you know, root combos, which are are decently reliable, I guess, uh, but still very. Uh, it takes a lot of work here for Zyra because she would have to expose herself if she wanted to get a good root combo. And it's very hard yeah. to do against a frontline like Rek'Sai, Alistar, Aurelia. So uh, Immortals are going to uh, have to work more around those skill shots. And uh, they actually have kind of Olaf charging in while Zyra's protecting Ezreal in the back. And a little bit of a mix there. Might get a little bit hairy, these team fights. Echo Fox, a much more secure frontline with the Alistar Rek'Sai. I like it. Not as much to stay in this game. You get Triumphant Roar from Alistar, but people are going to be going down this fight, and that means objectives. That means this game is going to go quick, and you have to be on Let's your go. toes. We're keeping an eye on Twitter and the hashtag IMTWIN and hashtag FOXWIN. Make sure you get online and send us your vote as we load up for game two. Echo Fox looking to put another stamp in that win column. They're going to have to do it for two straight games here. And Immortals, they are looking at game point right now as they came out with a sub 30 minute win in game one. Looking to continue that momentum into game two. We have two completely different compositions from both teams. We're going to be onto the rift. We'll see how they start this time. Echo Fox uh, try to get their hands dirty in the beginning of game one, kind of setting up a death brush that Immortals didn't fully walk into. And then we saw Echo Fox slowly walk into Immortals Jungle to try and get some vision, but nothing happened. Welcome Probably expect the same here as Echo Fox would more or less want a very even start of the game as opposed to the last game being down again. All right, looking like we may get standard lanes as well as both teams mm -hmm. fan out into defensive lineups. I like it. It's like a bit of a incursion here with Wild Turtle trying to get a little bit of vision into the Echo Fox blue quadrant. Rainover, Rainover is really trying to find out where the jungle start is here. Olaf has a lot of early power, by the way. Olaf can actually full clear very easily, getting super low, um, gaining the extra attack speed from his passive, and then just using Vicious Strikes uh, post-level 2 to gain back up his life. Minions Olaf actually down. likes to jungle with a low health pool, mm -hmm. not using his potions early so that he can increase his clear speed. Here comes the swap, though. Just feels so safe at low HP. It's weird. Yeah, I mean, swinging like a maniac. In in solo queue, it's a lot more effective. Or in ranked games, it's a lot more effective to invade Olaf's because they right. will be jungling low, and the rest of the team might not react. But here we go, invade on Olaf starts with four minions. And Big gets ignited, has to flash. That's the ghost. He has his axe. Undertow hits KFO. He actually looks to get the Equilibrium Strike start off. And the axe still picked up. Rainover's going to have a very low mana pool, but they're looking to get another flash out of this. They do. KFO gets actually the heal as well from the bot lane. Oh, so he's many off. summoners. Rainover trying to go back through the team to say, we can do this. <laughs> but they're like, uh, probably not. Probably Great not. start for Echo Fox. They give wow. the first blood over to Keith as well on the Caitlyn. And Big's gonna stick around for solo experience here because he was so low on health for uh, Keith. He wanted to go back, recall, and get a purchase. I believe he's gonna get at least a longsword, right? Um, but man, that is a huge, huge start. They kind of bait Rainover in. Rainover on yeah. Olaf has done this many times where uh, if, if they meet up early game, you know, just pop the ghost, low cooldown summoner spell, plus with Olaf having the... A repeatability with the axe throw uh, on yeah, the Yeah, that kind of keeps you going. You're like, I can get it again. I can get my axe. Yeah, just pick it back up. Oh, we can, we can blast <laughs> these guys. And then Level it's AOE, one. so you're almost good to go if they bunch up. Yeah, good little uh, bait there from yeah. Echo Fox. Very and I have to say, KFO held onto his flash for so long on Aurelia, baiting them in for as long as he possibly could before escaping. I thought he was going down, not going to lie. Yeah, kill from Keith, flash over the wall, and they secure first blood. This is the best start that they've had in a long time. Let's see if they can yeah. keep it up. I Definitely an annoying lane to deal with here as Turtle and Adrian are demonstrating. Poke landing there. That's the love to watch, hate to play against for Zyra. Mm. That's where that comes into factor. You're just under your turret getting rocked by these plants. These are the early levels I talked about on the Rumble Aurelia matchup, by the way, where Huni playing it super aggressively, trying to get 
Flame Spitter damage while he clears the wave on KFO. And he also knows that even though the first blood went over to Echo Fox, that first blood went into top lane. Hoonie doesn't care about that. <laughs> That's your problem. You deal with it. My, uh -oh. my laner actually doesn't have flash. Oh. Well, Belter doesn't have much mana, so hard. And he misses a little bit wide on that skill shot. It happens. Everybody playing quite safe here as we had the level one fight where more people used more summoners than abilities. Still, Triumphant Roar is going to be leveled here by Big in this lane to keep Keith healthy. Ooh. Helps as well that he can farm from a distance, but Froggen now on to Pole Belter. Pole Belter actually didn't go back after that wave. He saw it was Siege Minion time, so he was going to go ahead and stay for this, or Canyon Wave, I should say. Yeah, Pole Belter does have the teleport uh, he can use to get back to lane, so he's just trying to grab a couple CS here. Uh, make sure that he can uh, complete his tier on the back, and I believe he can. And then he'll just uh, teleport back into lane. Mm -hmm. Yep, there it is. That's a, you just want to make sure you can get that on your first back for Rise uh, if you do have teleport advantage like this. So he can come straight back, refill that potion. <laughs> He's just trying to get a sneaky back. Oh. Good interrupt. Their timings won't be too far off. Actually, I think Turtle may decide to hang out here. Seeing the, they're pushing the wave quite slow. He's got some time to wait. Yeah, with that canceled recall, Gotta weigh your options mm -hmm. there. Doesn't want to give up that minion wave. And since Echo Fox are recalling after it, should be fine for him anyway. Blue buff handed over. Does cost them cannon minion. That was nice. Good hit. Not that it stopped too far towards him, but while Turtle cleans that up, he'll have a side of minion wave to come back to. And everything's pretty even coming around this time. 27 to 28 for those top laners. A uh, bit of a CS lead in Frog, and as he just laser minion waves down, Pole Belter stacking that tier, so he's not worried if he falls behind a few right now. That yeah. damage, though, he's got to be careful about. Froggen doing a good job. High accuracy on his laser harass mm -hmm. so far. Previously, he'd been getting most of the laser harass through minions as well. So he had really good minion wave control uh, in addition to whittling down Pole Belter's health pool. That one there just goes for the one in open ground, though, since he has blue buff. Convenient yep. regeneration. And here we've hit the stage where Hooney's playing a lot safer. He has no vision. That's why he's not trying to bully and push up anymore. Uh, and they hadn't seen Rek'Sai in a while. Soon they'll see Rek'Sai because Hard is heading up to the top side. Might be on warding duty as well. He's got a sight stone already. So Three he's got a convergence. little bit of health. One turret shot won't be too bad for him to take. There it is. And they say we don't really have the grounds to keep doing this. Yeah. Good answer flash right there. Mm -hmm. Most supports are going to be down flashes now, but... I'd have to say that does favor Echo Fox because Zyra is a sitting duck with no flash. Nalstar doesn't care so oh, wow. much. Power in numbers, boys. Teleport oh. coming in. Will Hooney be able to do enough for the fight? Turtle goes down. Equalizer is going to help drop big as they clean up a few more. And Keith survives. Looks like Keith will actually live in this one. Hooney's locked up on the cupcake. One last shot from the brush. It's going to be enough and a triple kill coming in for Keith. Oh, it favors Echo Fox. And All right, for him. Three in the bot now. Huge Woo. pick up there. Yeah, Aurelia's going to get free farm. Top lane gets a bunch of kills. That's four on Keith now. He is set up to carry this game. Caitlyn's the AD carry we always talk about. Wants to get those crit multipliers in her build as early as possible. And this is going to be a huge boost to Keith getting there. As we said, Zyra trading flashes is advantageous for the Alistar. They take her down there, even though uh, Keith doesn't go for it quite as early as possible. Doesn't matter, though. The Equalizer was going to kill yeah. uh, Alistar anyway. And then Keith is able to survive here versus Huni, Dropping that trap down on him. Pretty big pickups here. Echo Fox making a very good case to push this to game number three. This is super early on, though, and they have so much work to do. So we said there were multiple steps. You know, yeah. Echo Fox, they know that they have these issues. Step one, get out of this landing phase early game yep. without a deficit. They've done that. Good job accomplishing it. Now they have to transition into that mid game, uh, really pull from that in game leadership. Yeah being able to identify that opening, knowing the solo lanes would have a hard time. They head to Keith and Big, and even doing that twice, Hard went through, so it'll probably put Immortals on the, you know, Hard was just up here, Rek'Sai won't be back, and then they show up with another member. Yeah, let's keep track of uh, the bottom lane as well, as it were, the one versus one, because yep. we also have to wonder what are the ramifications of that teleport advantage now. 
Not only did KFO get free farm in the bottom lane, he didn't even attempt to teleport up there. So he didn't even have to get a canceled teleport cooldown. He's got it ready and available for a repeat play up on that top side of the map on a flashless level five Zyra, which is, well, not gonna happen because Immortals make a really intelligent swap here. Yeah. They know that they would be exposed. They don't want to let Echo Fox use that teleport advantage. Very smart to opt out of laning phase after that uh, disaster for them up top side. And so now they just force him off the bottom turret. Strong push down there. Oh, here we oh. go. Gravity field to separate the fight. Card is in the right place at the right time. Rainover was actually just under him on award, so they wouldn't have wanted to take that too far. This could mean, though, with Immortals having that swap, saying, okay, Fox, take it, but kind of set up what they had in the first game, and that's going to be their first dragon in the same way. Yeah, Infernal Drake here going to be traded for the Rift Herald. Echo Fox know exactly what Immortals are doing. Uh, as soon as they showed with that four-man bottom lane, they're like, okay, you've got this area of the map. You're going to take it. We're happy to trade it for the Rift Herald. That should, I believe, go over to KFO. It could go over to hard for the jungle, which is not terrible, but in a matchup like this, I think Aurelia does need it uh, to help out yep. uh, with dealing with the rumble. So I'll have that just to the 30 minutes, actually. Gets it right at 10 there. Yep. So KFO actually not really needing the assistance. Echo Fox looked to another lane to make this, uh, get this one going. A question that people have kind of asked and looked at is can they play around more than just Froggen and it looks like they do so with Keith here. See how they can protect him as the game goes. Froggen obviously is still going to play a huge role on that victory in mid. We saw what Cobelter did last game so cannot count him out. Four to one and that 10 minute mark they are not down a thousand gold. They're actually <laughs> up two. Yes sir. Keith very much set up to carry this game. Mm. Got that early first blood pre minions plus the extra kills there on the top line dive and we shall see if he can increase his CS lead because Turtle's carrying a giant minion wave right on over to him and that should be the case here for Caitlyn. Stacking up. Gotta remember Immortal still going for the Rod of Ages and Tears on both Pole Belter and Wild Turtle. They have some time to relax here and say four, not that bad. We can still come back from this. Yeah, this is going to be our look at Immortals playing from behind. You know, how well can they Very handle true. themselves uh, now that they're the ones facing the early game deficit. Pobelter early flash over the gravity field to escape with his life. <laughs> Give him the same treatment. I have my ult up. You can have it. Yeah. This is for you. As spam that Victor ultimate. Gains you so much pressure in lane. Works against all these mid lane champions without generation. No waiting as well. Now that Immortals, this game has the double TP for them to set up pressure once they feel like the time is right. Yeah, look at this answered rotations in the mid lane as well. Keith and Big are coming down to pressure it and they actually cut off Zyra. Zyra was the extra wave clear that Immortals were trying to send down. So Pobelter pops his ultimate, clears that one out and allows Zyra to walk around so that she's in place for the next minion wave. That just causes Echo Fox to abort their mid lane push uh, they were trying to do. AFO actually does have his Rek'Sai right here. So junglers both on bottom side. Uh, means inaction. Has been a while since we saw Huni on Rumble, or even really Rumble. We've seen a few lately, but watching them manage their heat gauge is actually really impressive, even if not doing it for so long, like riding a bike. Cleans out the waves there. Managing that heat allows him to push off KFO a little bit stronger than KFO would have expected and rain over, or hard rather, can't do too much in that. Yeah. The reason we're not really seeing Echo Fox try and force anything right now is because yes, they do have this great early lead. However, they're waiting on a Trinity force for Aurelia. That's crucial for them. And the person that most of their money went to, this Caitlyn, yeah, it's great to get uh, Keith ahead, but he is, again, on the Caitlyn looking for the multiplier. So two items, uh, really, until you start to see a huge amount of that work. Although, is a pretty interesting video on top of Reddit right now about the Caitlyn <laughs> animation canceling, getting multiple headshots on someone, and the state he's at right now with that flat attack damage. If you do uh, the net into animation cancel of a trap, getting an extra headshot, and then your Peacemaker headshot, yeah. whew, can actually put out a very surprising amount of burst 
uh, for a sniper. Get your own wombo combo. It's pretty nice. See if, Solo uh, combo. See if Keith can do it to anyone. It's very difficult against Ezreal, obviously, has the arcane shift. Woo! I don't know if they'd actually look for a fight here. Keith's saying, this might be my last wave. I only have 2,300 gold in my pocket to spend right now. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> so 1,500 on Turtle. These guys have been away from home for quite a while. Yeah. And that's going to be a big cash in for Keith. Immortals right now just trying to hold on, clear out the waves, stabilize the game. As you mentioned, double tiers plus Rod of Ages here. Right. So... Waiting for that mid-game power spike surprise. Joy seeing the proto belt rushes. Huni gets his. Mm. That's actually been one of my favorite items uh, as far as Agreed. the mid-season changes. Not only does it provide that mobility, but it provides a lot of damage. I think the damage is really underrated on that item. Especially if not underrated by Huni though. He uh, <laughs> going straight for it. Yeah. Especially whole... if you do get in there as Rumble wants to. Oh, big! What a gravity field by Froggen. Rainover tries to go in. Pobelter thought it was safe. And like you said, big plays and big moves from the support as he comes in to throw it all off. Man, yeah, he just came. Wasted no time. Flash headbutt pull. He's in there for an insta-kill on Pobelter. And the, the Froggen the air. claims the money. Kefo may be trying to bait Huni out of his turret a little bit here as uh, Rek'Sai waiting around in the brush. Not going to happen, though, and they back off. A very nice, quick kill here. There's almost no time for reaction. You see Alistar on the screen. Boom. Ooh. Double locked up. Gravity Field is already placed as well. And Echo Fox with some very clean That's kills crazy. this game. You know it's fast when you say, where did that cow come from? <laughs> Quote me on that. I've never said that line, and I <laughs> like it. Five to one. Slowly picking up more kills. You can see how Immortals is kind of pulled back. They're saying we're not going to give too much over to Fox in the early part of the game. It looks like they know how to use it. KFO was able to use a bit of a, not even lead last time, when he knew his champion had a power spike, was able to use that Jax versus Aurelia. Now they know that Keith is strong, so maybe they'll start to set a few things up. They do have mid to push. Ooh. And that without sustain on that side, he's going to look to be hitting that ace in the hole whenever he can, I guess. Yeah, and he's actually gone for the rapid fire cannon instead of the hurricane. It's good eye. Hurricane's super popular for Caitlyn players, so you can stack up your headshots really quickly while in combat. However, if you stack one up and then you use the extra range for your rapid fire cannon to go land that one very powerful shot on someone, someone like a Zyra, mm -hmm. who is extremely squishy. Uh, you can chunk someone out of a siege situation before it even begins. And that's what Echo Fox really want to transition to. They've got this Victor plus Caitlyn and some pretty supportive front line to try and keep them safe for a siege. See if uh, they start using that very early, given Keith's four early yeah. kills. Teleport in now with that Triforce from KFO is going to be much bigger as he's kind of giving Huni that. CS business, 140 to 120, although a little harder to... We've seen Huni missing CS with that flame spitter and under the turret, actually, just a little bit ago. So maybe not up to par on that for himself. Definitely hurting him in items. Yeah. You definitely got to be wary of that Proto Belt plus flame spitter yeah, burst worry. as well. Now, that's a lot of burst damage that he can provide, and then it's hard for you to get away with the chase potential of Equalizer. Well, it's almost that time. Iceborne finished up. The tiers are getting close. Let's see, actually cannot count. Oh, 608 for Wild Turtle. So yeah, they're about 150 off. Not too bad. Yeah, maybe so maybe uh, these mid turrets. Once we see Keith complete his Infinity Edge, next purchase uh, shouldn't actually be too long before he's able to get. Uh, One action now, Kobe. Oh, but uh, well. Infinity Edge plus Rapid Fire, you may see if that's a headshot, that could be a <laughs> very large crit. And uh, in a fight, well, we might get a short one if people just get dusted by that. Caitlyn right now, Keith, 4 0 0. It looks like Immortals know that Fox is looking to get this dragon. They yeah. Get something for themselves at least, or force a fight because they know they're stronger. I know, yeah. Uh, Immortals, especially with the Rumble Ultimate, um, they actually might. You might think about them contesting. 
um, if you can get a great Rumble Ultimate around these early game dragon fights. Yeah. We've seen that for years. It's still true in League of Legends. But uh, as you said, Echo Fox, they have a really good comp for it. If they had gotten Caitlyn here earlier, they could set up traps, and that makes it really hard. They're not even waiting for Caitlyn, though. Uh, just starting it off right now. Here comes Rumble, though. He might look to land that Equalizer. They are worried. It's not the uh, the usual Rumble we're used to, the pen boots and the haunting just, eyes. He's they, got that different build. You still got to respect it, though. They just move right in. Echo Fox botched the Drake. I believe if they waited for Caitlyn and had Keith set up his trap line, they... Oh, well, here we go. Big. I don't think he's going to make it off of that. And there he Strangle goes. Thorns pops him up. They take him down. And Immortal... Oh, no. They pressure a dragon. They <laughs> got it already. And then Echo Fox lose something. It's like they were trying to test the waters when they didn't even need to. Yeah, it's, it's actually really weird how Echo Fox just kind of crumbled yeah. here on the 19th minute After all part. of that. They, they don't set up for the dragon, really. They hand it off. Now they're going to get run down in the turret. Oh, no. Keith didn't know where the Equalizer came from, and he netted right into Huni's Flame Spitter. The rest of the team get cleaned up. A great Peppa oh. overrides coming in. Actually, rather, that was hard. That fire? In. Oh, he's not close enough. Thought it was big. Big is still coming out of base, and it looks like Immortals is going to back up. That was hard flashing in to get that. It's the unseen Rek'Sai this time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about the second dive there. It came away kind of even, I guess. Yeah. And in the end, the turret stands. So let's take another look at this. Because here's the equalizer. Right down three of them. Uh, it does force summoners. And then they move in to clean it up. Brain over being the lead to die. Yeah. But Turtle was right in between two turrets with the Aurelia next to him. And he goes down very quickly. So that puts a stop to the dive from Immortals. I have to say, though, not only the Drake setup that we just saw from Echo Fox, but also that initiation from Big. There seems to be a bit of a communication breakdown, maybe. Mm -hmm. Anytime your Alistar does that all in and everybody else just watches them go down. Kind of hard. They all see that oh, getting past still the going in. would be very difficult. This time there's people to follow up. Very easy to get that one. All right, communication back online. <laughs> They get the kill this time. They get the turret down as well. It's funny how those little things happen. You see these well-executed plays and then kind of falls the other way just as fast. And Fox is coming out of the base with a lot of pink wards here looking to set up their vision and keep that vision. If they just set it up and not defend it, it's going to be worthless. So we'll see how they set the security up and how they protect it. Nine to four, Echo Fox keeping up in kills. Just got to make sure they keep up in turrets. Last game, they had a lot of gold standing throughout the 30 minutes, and they just finally grabbed the mid turret at the end. Hopefully, they can grab it a little sooner this time. Yep, they're up two to one right now, looking to make it three to one and cement this split push. KFO also has the cutlass, so the extra slow, very, very yeah. threatening. Honey's going to have to be extremely cautious until he finishes the Zonias. Straight for the Zanyas, actually. I thought he was going to turn that into a haunting, guys. Never mind. So, he gets it now. <laughs> Not too shabby. Lying in wait. However, he has gone to the store. Let's look if they can hold as well. This is going to be a pretty risky double man to hold if they want to try and hold this top turret. I don't think they're actually going to commit to it. Yeah, that seems wise. Down bottom, they're going for the dive. Oh. Oop. Tries to use the belt to get out with the dash. Hey, Pole Belter wants to clean it. It looks like they're actually going to be able to trade back the Retribution kill for Pole Belter. Do they have anybody else coming down for Hearth? They do not. The top lane is being pushed in quite hard here by Turtle. Now that that uh, Iceborne is finished up, he can start pushing these waves much better. He'll have Adrian to actually help him. They're going to go second tier for second tier. No, they're not. They're going to stop on the top side and lose mid, but there may be an initiation. A lot of movement here is making teams second guess the strategy they're trying to use. The teleport coming in on the mid lane. That's actually going to be Pole Belter, so they'll have lockdown for whatever happens. Big tries to go in once again. He'll go down without the team and trying to stop mid from going down and loses his life. Cows to the slaughter once again, and that's going to be an answer back. Immortals use the teleport. One of the teleports yep. to make that play. hooney has got a nice wave in the bot. Well, a wave collecting to farm out as he catches up to KFL. 
Immortals and look to clear out and vision on Baron. And remember as well, Immortals were the ones who got both of the Drakes. All right, let's take another look at this dive first, though. They waited around a long time to pull this one off, and the Zonios just delays the kill here. Hard now going to be able to tank that up. Full tank Rex side, no problem. And as you know, Pobelta comes down to clean it, but that actually gave up about 70% of the mid turret health uh, nice. for him to come clean that up. But uh, yeah, remember, even though Echo Fox, they've had this gold lead for the entire game, you know, they've been uh, kind of in control. It is Immortals who are able to take both of the early breaks, you know, because of that kind of failed setup, um, as well as the early uh, Infernal trade for the Rift Herald buff. So if Immortals are able to even up these turrets, you know, now they're back to 3-3 three, three on turrets. The gold lead's much closer. They can pose a very uh, threatening mid-game comeback. Fox, basically what they have to do, though, as we said from the very beginning, protect you. There's five kills on this Caitlyn. It's already got Infinity Edge, Rapid Fire, and almost Bloodthirster. So if they can keep him up and keep him auto-attacking through the fight, then they still should have the advantage. It's gonna be tough. You got Guardian Angels being rushed here. Rain over, second item, Guardian Angel. After his Sightstone and Jungle item, it looks like another one for Pole Belter is gonna be coming out. So after this burst of Froggen, they're gonna have a lot to deal with, with the Rain over and Pole Belter running around. It's gonna be scary. Zanya's on Huni as well, but Fox looking very good so far. Yeah, I like this play. Me. They're going for the True Sight Vision play around Baron, looking for the pick. They're also pressuring with KFO, who has teleport. They're itching. The side oh! swipe. Stranglethorns goes down with the gravity field. That's going to be the true damage from Rainover right onto Big, and the rest of it following through from Immortals. There's the TP. That's going to be coming in from Huni. Throws down the equalizer far away. That would have been off his screen. And they're able to completely push out Fox on this aggression. Yeah, Hard might go down eventually, but he's gonna make him work for it. And during that time, Aurelia is still pushing. Woo. Aurelia might get a turret for this chase. KFO has been kind of oh, silent off on the sides. <laughs> Hard finds his way out. A great flash over the thickest part of the wall there. It's gonna be Baron for that second tier turret. Bobel Earth. KFO is gonna push a little bit harder, hopefully. And he has teleport, but it's too late. 3,000, 2,000, Froggen won't go for it. Good choice there. He, there is definitely catch potential, especially from this team. You're going to get hit with the Iceborne and then a Harpoon. You can't chase that. You can leave KFO to the bot lane, though, and he will pick you up an inhibitor turret in uh, a bit more time. He dashes away. Smart move, though. He definitely would have been taken down. He can always teleport back and create that pressure. Yeah. All right. So Immortals, no fools. They spell it out. There's the counter initiation. Gyrant Zyra. Forces the frog and flash, and big just melts. Remember these Alistar changes to the ultimate. Yeah. Until he gets it ranked up, uh, it's a lot less. Uh, I believe it starts at 50% rather than 70 instead. And they're actually just been burning him through it. And that switch over to Baron, even though Hard was able to get out. Rek'Sai ultimate down. KFO does not want to teleport in, and Froggen doesn't really want to commit to mm -hmm. stopping that. So Immortal's actually very happy with the Baron traded for. 70% of their bottom inhibitor turret. And they're right back in this game. Actually, even ahead with the Baron buff plus double drakes. Immortals have retaken control. It's a really scary team as well to approach at a turret. You're going to be slowed. You're going to be stuck by Adrian's uh, grasping roots. So it looks like they give up that second outer tier. Fox now has to poke away at these Baron minions, which is going to be tough. Also, look at this deep ward here. It's kind of deep for Echo Fox. That's a possible ward for KFO to teleport on. As of right now, he's going to get this turret and exchange it for the outer and mid lane that Pobelt is working on. But it is Woo. a possibility if Echo Fox want to pull a flank. And Aurelia with double offensive items can just annihilate the back line. He could kill off easily a Zyra, maybe even Ezreal afterwards. He's really playing off a of groove from last game. Practically the same items that we saw him bringing on Jack. So he is feeling this aggression. KFO wants to be able to take some fights. This may not be the one. He is aggressive enough to try and stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Yeah. It looks like he does so for the Equilibrium Strike. And that Blade of the Rune King. 
So at least they pull back Pole Belzer. He has a teleport to get back into the fight. It does relieve enough pressure in mid, though. Yeah, it's also very a very strong defense here for Fox with Caitlyn and Victor. A lot of wave clear, plus the added defense of the trap spam that yeah. Keith can lay down in front of it. Makes turret defense very easy for them. However, Immortal's just gonna rotate right over, clean up the neutral objectives here. Mountain Drake, one of the best for the late game. Taking down the extra turrets, uh, gonna be a lot easier for them. Plus, next Baron, when it comes back up, is not gonna last long. I always do enjoy seeing complete aggressive items coming out from teams. Immortal Zanya's onto Adrian already after just his Eye of the Watchers, a haunting guy then that the regular build just trying to kill people on Zyra Puni with all of his finish and now that haunting guys and Leandries yep Echo Fox not gonna set up for this outer turret very low health they're gonna let it go they're trying to get KFO up to that bottom inhibitor turret remember how much mm -hmm. health he got off it last time it's still only at about 20% health so he'll be able to take it down quickly if he gets there and Echo Fox are looking to make their stand with the trap spam at that top turret and trying to pull the mortals. But once again, they send Poe Belter back. This rise forces Aurelia off. Uh, level 16 for both of them. And uh, Poe Belter's also got the Guardian Angel to yeah. boot. It's good to charge up. He needs that Void Staff to do a little bit of extra damage to the rest of the team. Something Frog has already got complete. How do they get into these fights? Right now it is back and forth. Keith's trap line has been kind of deterring from Immortals from being able to go any farther than what Rainover can chase. They can't go with him. Yeah. Remember, it's going to be Rainover running over the traps right. plus the equalizer from Huni. And if they can keep Keith safe from those two things on the dive, uh, barring a flash in from the rise, then uh, Echo Fox might be able to pull it out here. As of right now, the split push has been stopped completely, so yeah. KFO has to start back over from step one, work his wave all the way up, and they're just sending Pobelter right back down there to answer it. It's a very intelligent decision not sending. Oh! What a chaos Holy! storm! Can they follow it up? It's the Zanyas! Good thing Adrian built that right after his eye of the watchers. They stay alive, but they lose a lot of the pressure that they had. Echo <laughs> Fox is like, hey, it looks all this jungle we get back. Perfect. Oh my goodness, yeah, Echo Fox. The only problem is the waves aren't really in position for them to no, take much. Not. So as cool as that was to see a giant chunk of health from Immortals backline, both Adrian and Turtle, Echo Fox don't get much out of it because mm -hmm. no minion wave control, you know, the neutral objectives have already been cleaned up by Immortals. And in the end, it's just a maybe a rise in heart rate there for Adrian is all as he's able to get out. Right. But now he won't have flash and he knows that he's going to be a prime target. No Zonia's for a little bit while as well. Yeah. You know, the cooldown on that was increased. All right, Kobe. So pretty much even in gold, almost even in kills, but the map lead is in favor of Immortals. How can Echo Fox get yeah. the map lead back? I mean, I feel like they have to fight around a setup where they've got traps. Either a vision advantage, um, or as we've seen, you know, Big has had really strong initiations with Alistar. It's just that everybody has to be on the same page and ready to follow up on them uh, because they can combo That's, easily. Yeah. As we said, Adrian now no flash, no Zonias. He's a prime target. Uh, and Keith is still extremely threatening on this Caitlyn. So if they if they utilize those things, you know, the true sight there to get vision advantage and the traps from Caitlyn, can definitely pull it off. I think KFO would definitely have to join, though. It's been uh, a lot of side lane play for him. Yeah. Very few teleports into flank and join. Uh, and at the moment, we've seen <laughs> Bobelter on Rise can answer this split push all day. A bit of a whoopsie. Doesn't matter. Accidentally presses his ult on Aurelia as he's just farming down bot without a wave there. Oh, uh, Yax also, maybe not accidentally, but he bought two life grip items. Oh, right. The lifeline passive will yeah. not stack. Those are both called Lifeline now, and they are unique. So yes. you get one at a time. If you wait a long time and the other one times out and it's on cooldown, then uh, you can get the other one. But those are not going to both help at the same time. Another person will help at the same time, though. 
Can they take him out? Teleport's oh, here! Oh, pole belts are very, very low. He's trying to get out. The slow comes through. One last hit pops the GA. They have a long fight, though. Like I said, these GAs are going to be coming back up, and you've already expended the major spells you want to use to win that seconds. engage. Rainover has to ult Ragnarok out of the fight. Fox looking for Turtle, but he's just slowed too much. Stranglethorn goes down, so that may be a way that Keith can stay safe on the back line here. Doesn't have to worry about that big separating ult. The team can stick and peel with him. But members down on Echo Fox means they're still in a scat. And the flank from Pole Belter in the back. Where's he going? He's just running right through. He's like, I'm gonna get the tunnel first, and then I'll take you down. Keith is in the eyes. He is the prize. Froggen's gonna be next. A double kill coming in for Wild Turtle if they look for be big, he's now the only one left standing, usually the first one down, and it's Immortals going for Baron. Yeah, and there's a big minion wave pushing on the top lane as well, so they're gonna wanna clean that up right after Baron. They can't afford to send anyone back right now because they need everyone on Baron uh, to finish it in time. But man, that was such a huge swing there for Immortals. Yeah. Hope out there lasts long enough. Uh, with his Guardian Angel to be able to teleport in at the end of this flank. So early ultimate here from Rainover to escape and make sure he doesn't die early. But man, hard just sticking around there, takes the poke and Zyra ultimate cuts off the escape. Big kill there. They're like, you know what? We're gonna press it now. This is a three-man squad. Pobelta's got a great avenue. Even though he's already burned the Guardian Angel. Oh, there they are. Him charging in. This opens up for everyone else on Immortals to walk straight up. And Pobelter goes down, uh, allowing Adrian to get in there on the Zyra, who would have been vulnerable to land the Grasping Roots. And Immortals really take over. Four Drakes for them now, plus the Baron buff. And they've been able to recover from the early game to turn this one back around, looking to clean yep. it up 2-0. KFO's work has not been in vain, though. They were able to grab that top inhibitor turret with the minion wave, so it's been a long time coming. <laughs> He's, like you said, silent KFO. <laughs> he did it! But he could be deadly once he enters that fight, once his TP is the one that Huni and Poldvelter have been taking. But again, they just lost a bit of control on the map, and the cold now starts to swing towards Immortals. Once they have that lead, they know how to pressure very well. Here at the front of the base, we have Pole Belter bringing up the wings on the right side. KFO is actually going for inhibitor right now. They're going to have to yeah. respect that. There's the back. Fox, they have faith in their Victor and Caitlyn mm -hmm. defense, as they should. It's an extremely strong combo. You know, plus they have the front line of double knockups in Rek'Sai and Alstar. Yep. And Immortal's finding it very hard to break in through the inhibitor turrets past that defense. There's so much work Pole Belter's doing for these waves. Froggen's like, let them come. Just keep throwing those waves in. Pole Belter's like, I have to back now. I'll be right back. And it's been really slowing Immortals down, but bringing Pole Belter right back up to CS with Froggen. He was down quite a few before. And this time that they've been able to use has really gotten him big. GAs look to be coming back up quite soon. Is that still on cooldown for Pole Belter? Rainover has his. Look at all, it's almost like they all shop at the same store. The Andries and Zanyas, GAs. Those are friends shopping together. 40 minutes coming up. This one going a little bit longer. Immortals able to close out the previous game in sub 30. Echo Fox here looking to make a stand. Yeah, it's really rough when you run into that trap wall. You can't press in on that turret. You have to uh, switch it up and rotate to another lane. So they're going to take out this uh, last outer turret. Those are much less defensible, though, in Echo Fox. Mm -hmm weren't really planning on defending that turret, so not too big of a deal uh, as that gold going over isn't going to hurt him too much. Rem remember, there's a split push going. The pressure on the turret. Nice by Big. He actually oh. hits Huni right in the face, causing Huni to use the Zanyas. They're going to take out Keith immediately, though. That's the power that was growing for Fox, and you see just how quick they realize that power went away. They have to back off and are now watching their base turn to shambles. Hard back to the fountain. Froggen gets caught up and gets deleted as Pole Belter flashes forward with the undertow help. The kill actually coming in from Adrian is just everybody can attack from out of range. Like you said before, Kobe, it's gonna be very hard to stand at a turret for either side once you're getting pushed back. And yeah. now they go for the final Nexus turret. KFO flashes in to get a bit of his own aggressive play. The lifeline's proc, but he's still going to go down as they're sated. 
It is the win coming in for Immortals. Eight minutes longer on this one as it took him a bit. Echo Fox putting up a very nice defense, but it wasn't enough in the end. Immortals take down Echo Fox two to zero.